everybody. Welcome to Studio 5. Okay, I want you to picture something right now. We all know that couple, yeah. right? The couple that doesn't necessarily do everything perfect, but they just seem to get it right. They have it good. They do. And today we're going to peek in on the lives of those happy couples and ask, what are those happy couples doing right? Joining us on Studio 5 is relationship coach Matt Townsend. We, have so, we see those people. We all yeah. know them, and we want to have part yeah. of that life, but we're not really sure exactly what it is that they do. Well, they're freaks. <laughs> Can I say that on KSL? You just did. They're so rare. I think you guys are that couple, but oh, not, like, not. I mean, you're a television couple. <laughs> you're like the Huxtables that we'll talk about in a minute. Well, the rumors are starting. Thanks a lot, Matt. No, but you know what? They do just little tiny things, right? And, but you know what? The research is now proving little things make a huge difference. Okay? First one, you ready? Yeah. These people understand that they have to bring their own sunshine. In a happy couple, happy couples are made up of two people who recognize they're responsible for their happiness, they're responsible for their life. And they don't let their partner's negative days create negative days for them. They keep bringing their own sunshine. And the research shows when you have a partner that doesn't react to everything that you do, to react to every mood you're in, then you actually create a stabilizing force for that partner. We create more predictability when we're both more proactive instead of reactive to each other. So you're a better team, you're a better partnership yeah. when you're individually focusing on your happiness. Yeah. A little when bit, you're responsible extent. for your own happiness. Instead of me being totally dependent on my wife to make me happy, I need to learn to be responsible and bring my own sunshine so to my So it's life. almost a little bit of ignoring the other couple, the other person. I mean, if they yeah. come home, they're in a bad mood. Instead of letting them bring you down, uh -huh. just ignore them, block yeah, it out. You could still go try to recognize it. Hey, hun, you seem down. Do you want to talk about it? No, I'm okay. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to lunch. <laughs> See you, bye. But it's somebody that just—it's not somebody that just will coddle it and 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 become so dependent that we can't move on in life. Yeah, it's a big deal. Think about it. Any Two. examples of that? No, not oh. one. Oh, I do actually. <laughs> you ever heard of the Huxtables? Don't say that because because she is young. She's a young. You probably American. don't remember the yeah. Huxtables, I've never seen but they the were. Show. Are you kidding? They I'm were not. America's family. They were. But do you remember how he he was? She was a little more serious, a little more stoic, uh -huh. and he was just fun. And he would bring the fun every time he could. He'd come in. It didn't matter if she was a little serious. He'd get serious with her, but he was always able to bring his own happiness. And to me, that's a perfect little example. You can have a mood. It just doesn't always have to influence mine. They were both very okay. independent of each yeah. other. I mean, that's they both the had their own that's their the own sunshine, really. They you have to have two on. independent people to make interdependent relationships. If not, you have two dependent people, which creates codependency. It's the last thing we need. Bad. Right? Number two. You have to see and share the positive about your partner, okay? There's some really interesting research that about happy couples that they see the positive and they share it. A guy named John Gottman, who's one of the leading researchers in marriage and family, did a study about how people talk about how they first met. So couples that have been married six years, when they describe how they first met, those couples that uh, the researchers could identify with about 80% accuracy if those couples would divorce or not, just based on how they told that story. Wait, yeah, what, what, are, yeah, what are the clues they pick up? If they up tell on? a lot of like, if they talk about how it was kind of a mistake, like we were really young when we met and we didn't really know what we wanted in life. So they're telling all this story that's kind of showing we're not happy now. It was kind of a mistake. <laughs> if we had thought more about this, we may not be here. Those kind of stories, or if they talk and use the pronouns um, you or he or him or her versus I or we or us. We were so happy back then. We, when we first met, we, 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 we. Those words matter a lot. And every time you say something negative, like it was, the, we, we were so poor, we had no money, we lived in a basement apartment, and you know what? It all turned out for good, because look at us now. If they could always turn it and spin it positive, then those were couples that were going to be more likely so, to last. So when you say sharing the positives about your relationship, do you mean sharing them with each other or with other people? It could be sharing with each other, sharing with other people. It's how you talk and see your relationship. Just in general, how if you, you see talk it more with positively your... and you talk about it more positively, huge dividends that in the could, relationship. That could be a great barometer. If you're if you're going out yeah. with somebody, no, totally. ask tell, them. tell the other person, say, hey, mm -hmm. ask my husband how we met or ask my yeah. wife how we met. Just it's don't a, tell them what you're telling yeah, yeah, so them. <laughs> it's totally real. And it's a big And you can also say and have them talk about their honeymoon or have them talk about their wedding day. And if they still talk with this joy and this gleam in their eye, bingo! They've got it. Bingo! Okay, third. They, now, this is the one. This is the killer. The, the successful couples, couples have mastered the art of the tough conversation. The number one thing I deal with day in and day out are couples that do not know how to talk about the serious issues. They just can't do it. Ever. I mean, I have so many couples that are dying, struggling, so frustrated with each other. I have a couple right now. It's the neatest story in the world. 84 years old. Mm. They came into me at 84. 
They don't want to die not knowing how to talk. And they've been married, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. for they've a while. They've been married 60 okay. something years, 65 years. Can you believe it? Wow. And they're learning it. And they're sitting down eye to eye, and they're now able to talk about it. For any couple out there that doesn't know how to do this, this is the number one tool because it's our conversations that create all the meaning of our life. So if our meaning's going ugly, it's probably because our conversations aren't working. And where does that start? How do you know if your conversations are suffering? Well, well one way to I know mean, is are you having them? There's a volume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're not having these, you'll, you'll know because we never can solve certain issues. If you have 10 issues that you are afraid that if they're ever brought out, it's fight time or it's avoidance time so if you avoid all these topics or fight about them you're in trouble the rule is these ideas are gonna come out some way they're gonna come out pretty in a conversation or ugly in a fight they're coming out you got to deal with them okay so that's the third one the next one is they balance the couple with the crowd this one intrigued oh. me because mm -hmm. again you think of um, turning inward to, yeah. to strengthen your team but See, there's a balance. Well there's a huge deal forever we've like okay hey, you gotta you gotta cleave under your partner under no one else right so just get rid of your parents get rid of your family cleave under your partner well the research is showing the couples today they're only cleaving unto each other they're, they're not they're not connecting with family like they used to they're not going to social outings or gatherings they're less politically active in almost every category couples today are just only with themselves but wait are you saying that that's a bad thing I mean I would imagine no. my wife and I are strong we're it's together powerful. we rely on each other yeah. all the time we have everything in common and we're, we're independent on the, the danger the is then everything we have everything we need is from our partner so we become so dependent on our partner meeting most of our needs that the society, that community, that family, that your wife's best friends used to meet some of those needs. Now you have to meet them all. You have to talk that much. You have to understand every mood. You have to understand the feminine need. All of these things that are virtually impossible for the man of the world. Yeah. That's why Matt's picked up glitter scrapbooking. Oh, I love <laughs> glitter scrapbooking. I got two glue guns he for Father's Day next need. year. That's so what's what the, the key is balance though, because this could swing yeah. obviously oh, yeah. too far the other direction. So the, the idea is is you gotta you gotta be tight with your partner love your partner love being with your partner and I think you need friends and you need social outings and you need to go to family and you need to balance it the best way to know is are we complaining too much about one or the other this is about think about it if a tsunami hit in Utah we'd be in trouble but if a tsunami hit we would need people mm -hmm. do you have people in your life that you're close with that you could actually go to okay yeah. last but not least is what is it it's a really good one this one made me cry. Doing stuff together, right? This is the one where we get into The Bachelor. Happy couples re-energize their marriage with three simple ideas. New, exciting, and together. Every date, if you watch on The Bachelor, tends to be new, exciting, and together. <laughs> they're new things. They're fun things. Hey, we're going to fly at a private jet to Las Vegas or wherever. Research shows that couples that do new and exciting things together, it creates a bunch of chemicals in their brain. Dopamine, adrenaline, neopinephrine, all these other drugs that make you feel attached and connected. It creates excitement. And then if you do them together with each other, your brain thinks, hey, this woman makes you feel all of these feelings, even though really it's the bungee jumping. <laughs> but your brain doesn't know it. And we trick our brains, and it makes us actually feel this chemistry for each other again. Interesting. It's hot. So, so they might not be falling in love with each other. No, they're, they're falling in love with a bungee. Bungee jump, but like you can't surprise. marry a bungee jump, can you? <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun, but, but it works. Out, break out of your Friday night. Make dress. everything new. Now go to a new date night with Matt Townsend. Do something exciting <laughs> with Matt Townsend. No, I don't care what you do. Speaking Here's the of, coolest thing in the world. Date night. Now you're doing this new thing, right? Brand new announcement. So if you're a female and you're listening, which is probably a lot of you, Smart Life for Women. It's a brand new workshop. Every single Thursday, I take the topics we talk about here and I go for an hour and a half in depth. It's just for women. We're going to talk about self-esteem, how to single-handedly improve your relationship, all by your lonesome. It's 15 bucks for an hour and a half, so it's cheaper than your kid's music lesson. And I imagine more fun. <laughs> Ten times more fun. Go all to right. matttownsend.com to get information. Every Thursday. Every Kicking it off today, Thursday. right? Thursday. Okay, good luck. Thanks, guys.